lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this on Wedding Chicks or over on Facebook, thank you so much for stopping by. So first and foremost, before we launch into today's video, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I cannot tell you how much it means to me for each and every one of you to follow along and come and watch these. I am so honored to be a part of your wedding planning process. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching this, scoot on down there, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell so you can get notifications every time we upload a video. So now to the main reason that we're doing today's video, it's actually because a subscriber like you left a comment on one of my recent videos where I shared that we planned our wedding in $8,000. And that is no small feat. It's small money, but it's not a small feat. And she asked me if I could break down what that cost looks like. So I put together all the numbers. It's been a long time. It's been a couple of years and I don't have receipts for everything, but I do have some pretty good numbers of what everything costs and I came up with that general number. There is a difference though, I will say, in your wedding budget and that is the money that you, your fiance, your parents, his parents, some family member or some friend has set aside for you a big chunk for you to use on your wedding day as your wedding budget. It's huge, it's big, it's something that you chip away at. My life hack for planning our wedding was to use a little bit of my living budget as well. Every time I went to go get groceries at Trader Joe's, I'd pick up a couple of white pumpkins because we use those in our decor. I'd drive by the post office and pick up a sheet of stamps and that didn't come out of my wedding savings budget. So I was able to eke out a couple extra hundred dollars out of my living budget to make sure that I had all the extra details that I needed. So we had $8,000 wedding budget, but I did buy some stuff on the side to supplement that budget. When it comes down to the end of this, we ended up spending a little over $8,500, but $8,000 of that was our wedding budget and $500 is what I was able to eke out along the way. I will also say we were gifted a lot of things for our event and this is not normally the case for a bunch of people. We borrowed a lot. We were gifted a lot of things, so we ended up spending a lot less on certain items than most people would have to, and that was the only way that we were able to get it for as cheap as we did. Our venue was stinking cheap and stinking incredible. It was actually a senior center, which I know sounds real weird, but they just recently remodeled it. It's the Norman P. Murray Center in Mission Viejo, California, and because I was a resident at the time, we ended up getting a very, very cheap deal for the space and we spent $800 for the rental time and for the security guard and for the alcohol liability life insurance. So my recommendation for anyone who's trying to do a wedding within a $10,000 budget is go to a public space like that because that was owned by the county. So it was a lot cheaper than going with a standard professional wedding venue. For photography, we ended up spending a lot more because that is the one thing that we, other than marriage, <laughs> that you walk away with from your wedding day. It's one of the only things that you can keep and one of the only things that you can look back on. So we spent $2,500 on Bonnie Jean. We got our engagement photos out of that and we also got eight hours of coverage on our wedding day with a second shooter and I felt like that was a great amount to spend on photography. For video, we got a huge gift. One of my best friends is a wedding videographer and he gifted us all of his editing time which was incredible. So all we had to do was pay for his two shooters to come down and shoot our wedding day. So that cost us $750. I cannot tell you what amazing blessing that was. I cannot tell you that that would be a deal that you could find with anybody else. But for us, it was huge. Food, we went with a company called Killa Tacos. I will link them down below if they're still in business. It was $6 a head, so six bucks per person, and it included two to three tacos per person, rice, beans, chips, and salsa. And that was a freaking screaming deal. So for 140 people, we paid $840 for all of our food. And it is possible to find something out there like that. It may not be quite that cheap. You may have to work a little bit harder, but uh, it was, it can't, guys. And we had um, friends and family supply a couple more salsas. So we ended up having a salsa bar for our cocktail hour instead of appetizers, and it was a big hit. Drinks, we had water, lemonade, wine, and beer, and that is it. We didn't offer sodas, we didn't offer hard, hard alcohol. Beer in a bottle and wine in a cup was way cheaper than any other bar option we could have had. We spent about $400 on all of our beverages. We borrowed uh, drink dispensers. The ice was gifted to us as well. Rentals, we spent $460 on rentals. That doesn't sound like a lot because it's not. All we rented were um, chairs for the ceremony space that ended up being moved over to the reception and five tables because the rest of the tables we borrowed from a local church. We didn't have a huge cost when it came to that, but we were able to find a resource that we could use them for free as long as we took them away ourselves and returned them ourselves. Desserts I can't find an exact number for. Again, this was another time where I had um, a friend, in this case it was a family member who's a professional in the field, and she charged us I think about $200 for 
for desserts. So basically just for her supplies. She didn't charge us for her time, she didn't charge us for rentals or anything like that. You may not have a connection like that, but something that you can do instead is go to Costco, pick up some desserts, and have someone set up that dessert table for you if you're really trying to make things work on a really, really small budget. Flowers, if you've seen some of my videos before, you know that I did all of my own flowers for my event, and it was so much fun, but it was also so insane, and it takes a certain amount of sanity to be able to pull it off, and I was right on that line. We would have spent $220 on our florals, but one of my best friends swooped in at the last minute and paid for it for us. I thought I'd include that number in there for reference because that's what we would have paid. Attire. This was probably one of the biggest cost-saving things that we did. I bought a used dress, and let me tell you, I'm so glad I did. Not everybody's into that, and that's okay. But for me, spending $300 on a dress and $250 on alterations ended up being one of my favorite elements of my wedding day. It fits me really well, it was really cheap, it was great. My husband, he had a suit tailored just to him for a grand total, I think, of $200 for the suit and $150 for alterations, so $350 for that. So $850 for both of our clothing items. So, big tip, buy a used dress. I mean, if it's not weird to you, do it, because it saved us, well, easily a thousand bucks. If you're keeping track, that total up to $6,800 that we paid for professional items for our wedding day. There's a lot of items that we're missing, and that is where I DIY'd my little fingertips off. Uh, I did a lot, and if I had the opportunity to do it over again, I would not. We saved a lot of money, but man, did I work my friends and family to the bone for setup and for teardown, and for that, I will forever feel guilty. Shout out to the groomsmen for the setup, and my dad, and all of our friends for the teardown. You guys are the real MVP of our wedding day. Here's some of the elements that I DIY. If you haven't seen my DIY bride fail video, I'm gonna link that down below as well, because I purchased all of the linens for my event, and uh, for linens, we spent a grand total of $250 on tablecloths and napkins. Invitations were another element that I DIY'd. I got this really cute wood paper and I got a custom made stamp and then I stamped it all on myself and those came out to $280 for the 80 invitations that we needed for our guests. Centerpieces. In addition to florals, we had vintage silver pieces, vintage glass pieces, wood rounds, and white pumpkins and succulents at almost every single table. Those averaged out to be about $20 per centerpiece in addition to florals. I also created some custom backdrops for our event, and I will say this is one of my favorite elements. It took forever, and it was a pain in the high knee to move them because they were huge, but we bought painter's drop cloth, and my husband stretched it over some existing 2x4s that we had, so he made basically this giant canvas for me to paint on, and those totaled, both of them, were about 60 bucks, including the drop cloth, the paint, and the brushes. Votive candles. I spent about 150 bucks on the glass votives and the candles to go inside them. Lights. I was the crazy person that bought cafe string lights for our event. We spent about $500 and got about 500 feet, which meant my husband had to set it all up and then our friends had to tear it all down. It just was, whoo, it was a lot. However, I loved what it did. But 500 bucks on something is a huge expense. We're using them in our backyard now currently, which is always really fun that we were able to reuse those. But still, plates and flatware, we went disposable with all of those things and it cost us $175 from Costco to get those items. I got the nicer plastic ones and then the nice plastic like, but silver looking flatware, so that was a lot cheaper for us. Disposable cups. Now for the wine, we were able to borrow wine glasses from someone, but we still needed cups for the water and for the lemonade. The beer was served in bottles, so that was fine too. We spent about $40 on disposable cups for those options. I spent $100 on film for an Instax camera that we ended up using for our guest book. I also got giant pictures printed up at Costco for these cabanas. They were pictures from our engagement session and I thought that it really created this cool kind of like all-inclusive feeling. 40 bucks on that. The pumpkins, all in all, we got a bunch of white pumpkins because we got married on Halloween. I don't know if I shared that. So I wanted it to be like a nod to fall without being a Halloween wedding. We probably spent $150 on all of those little white Cinderella pumpkins and I freaking loved them. They were so cool. And we used them throughout various areas of the event to kind of enhance the decor. I also purchased a rug to be our aisle runner for our wedding. Uh, it was about $180. The reason that I bought one instead of getting um, an aisle runner from a rental company is one, aisle runners from rental companies I personally think are hideous. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, there are very few out there that I find even the least bit attractive. And I wanted to buy something that was a lot more special that we could use in our home for the rest of our lives. So the aisle runner that we had on our wedding day is now downstairs in our hallway. Again, almost $200 is a lot to spend on an element like that, but to me it was worth it. And the last thing that we spent money on was a U-Haul. Friends, let me tell you, 
If you need a U-Haul to transport all of the items from your wedding day, you got too many items. It was so much stuff. I used my kitchen table as our sweetheart table. We made all of our florals. I had these giant backdrops. Heck, even my freaking headboard was the backdrop for the bar that my husband made too. So, I mean, like, we had so much stuff. I had a U-Haul with a lift gate. Like, when I say I DIY'd a lot, I DIY'd a lot. And I would not recommend that anyone do the amount that we did. You'll notice that there are quite a few things on there that I did not mention. Other items that we got for free or that we were able to borrow or that were gifted to us for a short amount of time would be the rest of the tables we borrowed from a local church. The DJ and the band actually were also from that local church. They offer their services for free, which was incredible. And what we ended up doing was donating towards a recording studio that they have. It's Foss Studios. They're actually out on YouTube as well. I will link them below. Go check them out. They're pretty darn incredible. Our labor was entirely free. We didn't hire a service staff. We didn't have anyone to pick up after us. That was all my dad, all my friends, all my family. Our efficient was also free. Pastor friend of ours married us and he gifted us with that service, which was really cool. If you were following along with me and you did the math, that totaled up to $8,505. So again, $8,000 from that wedding budget, $505 from that living budget. We were able to pull off a wedding for less than $10,000, which is incredible and I'm immensely proud of the fact that we could do that. And I still look at my wedding day and I look back and I love so many elements of it. There are very, very many things that I would change though and I would highly recommend not doing all the things that I did because that was too much. So, what did I learn from planning a $10,000 wedding? <laughs> a lot. I learned that it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. It is physically possible, however, it is hard. It is hard work and weddings are stressful and emotional enough as is. So do whatever you can to make sure that you can infuse some money into this because not that I would ever encourage you to throw money away, but I would encourage you to not bite off more than you can chew like I did because it was a lot. I was not a happy person to be around for generous portions of my engagement. You can ask my husband. I got cranky real fast. I was so tired. <laughs> so that's all we have for today folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are watching this on Wedding Chicks over on Facebook, hop on over to YouTube, search my name, and hit that subscribe button. I get so excited when people subscribe to my channel, and I'm so excited, again, and honored to be a part of this wedding planning journey with you. So subscribe for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. Until next week, bye guys.